this video, we're going to be installing CyanogenMod 10.1 Android 4.2.1 on the Sprint Samsung Galaxy S3. If I find links to other threads, I will try to include them, like for the AT&T, T-Mobile, and etc. But this process will work on other devices, but please keep in mind, you will need the exact CyanogenMod 10.1 ROM meant for your phone. You can't use the Sprint Galaxy S3, which is the D2 SPR, on like the Verizon or AT&T, T-Mobile, etc. You can't use those, so you've got to, you know, find the one meant for your phone. So what we're gonna first do is, right now we're running Frankenstein's Killjoy like 2.3 or 1.3 or whatever it is, the latest version from their uh, website. Um, if you like TouchWiz, I definitely recommend checking out this ROM. It's pretty awesome and she's been running it ever since I did the video on it, which I will link to in the description. So definitely a good ROM running Nova Launcher, of course. But honestly, AOSP is my favorite thing, so if it's your favorite thing, then definitely check out this video. If not, check out the video I'll link to in the description. So, what we're going to do is we're going to open up Titanium Backup, which is available from the Google Play Store. Hasn't been ran in a while. If you have any filters up there, you'll clearly be able to tell. So, you'll just go up here and you'll press uh, Backup, and then you'll go to Edit Filters, and then Clear, and then Checkbox, and then go to this little Batch thing and then go down here to backup all user apps and system data and press the little checkbox. That way, when I install Sanjum at 10.1, I can restore her Need for Speed Most Wanted game save, which she has like $999,999,999. And those of you that follow me on Twitter, I sent you that game save. <laughs> um, just the game save. So you had to have bought the game in order to use the game save. So anyways, I can restore most sensitive apps like tap a talk with like you know 13 different accounts and your signature customized and you know stuff you spend a lot of time doing you can restore that but i wouldn't restore everything like something where it's just a, like facebook something where it's just a simple put in your email address put in your password bam you're good to go don't restore app data the simple stuff just don't do it you can cause your phone to get stuck in a boot loop and then you're stuck reinstalling your rom from scratch because you restored something that's now causing a boot loop so just be very, very cautious of what you restore and you'll be okay. Asphalt is a really good example right there. That is a game that takes a, you know, it takes a long time to build your way up and get better cars and etc. So restore that. Just don't restore everything, especially not system data. If you're coming from a TouchWiz ROM and going to an AOSP ROM, don't restore a single thing that system. If you do, that's completely on you and you'll be the one restoring your ROM, um, wiping and installing it from scratch again and then not restoring that. So yeah, now let's just wait for this to go ahead and back up all the stuff and we'll be back. So the backup is complete. At this point, we are going to go to the schedules tab and we're gonna sing it to Dropbox. If you don't see that there, then you don't have the pro version or you haven't gone to menu, preferences, and then check Dropbox, Box.net, or Google Drive. You can check all three of them if you really want to. Whatever ones you check will be under the Schedules tab. Just press Run, and if you haven't done it yet, it'll ask you to log in. Just press Log In. It'll bring up the account that you have on your phone. Just press Allow, and then it'll start uploading or downloading stuff from your phone to Dropbox, or vice versa. This is taking entirely too long. I'm not going to wait this long for it to freaking upload everything. So I'm going to go ahead and just cancel it out for now. Just press the back button. It'll say cancel by user. Eventually takes a second. Um, at this point, what you're going to need to do is open up the Google Play Store and open in search for an app called Goo Manager. And then she should already have it installed, hopefully. And it is. So we're just going to open it. For some you open it, it's going to want root permission. Just allow it. And then uh, what I recommend doing, no matter what recovery you're using right now, is press menu, install open script recovery, press yes, and then you'll see right there 2330. Now, I don't have a clue, since this is my wife's phone, which one she's running, because I don't, this is my device, I don't maintain it. So I'm going to go ahead and just press yes, just in case she has an older recovery. It's always a good idea to have the very latest recovery. If you do have issues with it, then it's too easy to go back to an older recovery. In fact, I'll try to remember the link in the description where you can actually go to goo.am and you can download every Torp recovery that's been released so far. So like if the newest version has an issue, 
the oldest version shouldn't. See, it was that simple. The recovery is now installed. We backed up all our apps. They are on our SD card. If you let it finish, they're also on Dropbox or Box.net or Google Drive. So we backed up our apps. We're good to go there. Um, we just updated our recovery. So at this point, I'm also going to just press the home button. And then since we use Nova Launcher, I'm going to go to Nova Settings. And then I'm going to go to Backup. And then press Backup. And press OK. And then it put it in the com in the data com test slar thing. And also, um, so that way I don't have to, she uses Plume just like I do. It's honest, I've used Falcon Pro. I've used every single Twitter app out there and nothing um, compares to Plume in my honest opinion. So I'm going to put up Plume, press menu, settings, and then I'm going to go down here to import, export, and I'm going to export, and then I'm going to press OK. That way we don't have to actually restore this app with Titanium Backup. We don't have to. So I'm also going to open up um, something like ES File Explorer that is available for the Google Play Store and it's free. And then I'm going to find this data folder right here. So it's got the comp and it's got the plume. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down on this right here. Copy. And I'm going to press Favorites. And I'm going to go to the external SD card. And I'm going to press Paste. So what in the world does she have right there? Data. Okay, so, oh, it's got the old, the old one, so it's okay. I'll go back, go to SD card, go to data, and this is the internal SD card, so go to favorites, and then go to external, and then press paste, and yes, I'll go ahead and override it since it's the older one, and you can see the process up there, it's done successfully so we backed up all our apps with titanium backup we have it uploaded to the cloud we have our nova launcher settings backed up we have our plume settings backed up any apps that allow you to um, take all the settings and put them on your sd card do that now we don't have to actually use the titanium backup and restore it and have like issues with app data from another rom conflicting and having force closes and etc so um, at this point what we're going to do is open up the goo manager app one more time and we also update the recovery using Google Manager. We're going to go to Browse Compatible ROMs. And then we're going to go to CM. And then we're going to go to D2SPR, which is the Sprint Galaxy S3. We're going to go to Nightly. And then we're going to go to this one, 10.1, which is Android 4.2.1. Just press on it. Press Begin Download. And then wait for the timer to count down all the way. So now the ROM's downloading, and you'll see the progress of it up right there. Also, you have to do this, otherwise you will not have the Google Play Store. So please, don't forget to do this. Press Download G Apps, and it'll download the G Apps that are meant for Android 4.2.1. You're going to need these to have the Google Play Store and a lot of other Google apps. Um, if you don't flash these, then you'll go, where's my Play Store? How can I download other apps? Yeah, you have to download these. So the G Apps and the ROM. So it's downloading both of those and um, see one of two right there, one slash two. So that's the progress of it. Titanium Backup's finally telling me that I canceled out the upload because it was taking too freaking long. Initially, I wanted to, if it had to upload like maybe 100 megabytes or something, uh, because it only uploads the differences from last time. Like if you uploaded yesterday, then there should only be like 60 megabytes of stuff it needs to upload. So that was like over a gig. So yeah. Plus, I'm using a router from like six years ago right now because my other one died. Good old WRT54GS version 7.2 with uh, DDWRT on it. So it's not slow, but it's not wireless in. It's good old wireless G. So it's uh, finishing up on the ROM. This is the actual ROM, like the most important thing besides the G apps because you can't just flash one zip. Well, you can. You can flash the zip that it's doing right now and have the ROM, but you won't have the G apps. So you have to have both of them. But what I'm trying to say is it's downloading the most important one because without it, the ROM, it, it won't, you don't have a ROM. The G apps is are actually weighing in at like, I think 100 megabytes or so. So this is uh, about the size of the ROM. <laughs> Another benefit to using uh, the Goo Manager app is, as you saw, it checks the MD5. So if you download it in an incomplete ROM, um, you won't have a bad flash because it, it'll say invalid and it won't let you, It'll you can just retry to download it. It won't let you flash it. So it's pretty freaking sweet.
as you'll be able to tell, this took a long time, longer than I ever expected it to. All right, so it's done downloading. At this point, we're gonna know whether that download was bad or not, and it wasn't, it was good. So we can just press on the CM10 one right here, and then we can choose, I already have one installed since we did the open script recovery install process. We're gonna press order flash selected, and then we're gonna choose the ROM at the top and the G apps at the bottom. So make sure you have it in that order right there. If you have like this on the top, then it'll mess things up, trust me. So just press down and have the CM 10.1 at the top and G apps on the bottom. Um, and then we're gonna also press this one, we're gonna press this one, and we're gonna name it um, Killjoy, just a way to identify the ROM. If you don't name it and it defaults to the date, then you're going to be restoring like seven different Android backups to figure out which ROM was the one that was CyanogenMod or which one was this one because they were all just dated and you don't know which one's which. So make sure you identify them clearly. Like if you're running AOKP, just call it AOKP. So uh, press OK. And then also we're going to do a factory reset data wipe and we're going to press flash. And then yes. All right. And at this point, you can pretty much just leave the phone alone and come back, you know, 10, 15 minutes from now, and you'll be fully booted into Android 4.2.1 with the G apps installed. You have to do a factory reset, especially if you're coming from a totally different ROM over to um, AOSP, uh, Signed 10 or AOKP, or etc. You have to do a factory reset. Otherwise, it's just, it's things are going to get, it's not going to work, trust me. So... We're backing up the ROM so that way she can go back to this ROM if she would like, if, uh, you know, if maybe there's issues with CM10, like Bluetooth or something, something you just can't live without. You can easily go back to the Killjoy ROM where everything works, nothing's broken. So um, just make sure you do an Android backup just in case the ROM you're flashing has issues. You can just go back to this one and you'll be fine. So it's backing up. Once it's done, it's going to wipe, then it's going to install the ROM. Then it's going to install the G apps and then it's going to reboot. If you want to know how to do this manually without using this automated, super easy, you know, set and forget method, I will have a link in the description on how to install Sanjumod 10 where I did it manually. So yeah, I'll have a link to that and it's so easy. You just use the 4.2.1 G apps that you downloaded with um, Goo Manager and you use the CM 10.1 ROM that you downloaded with Goo Manager and you flash that instead of the CM10 ROM that's in the video I'm gonna link to. So um, I much prefer this method because it's super freaking easy. And if you're new to flashing, this this is definitely the easiest way of flashing a ROM. Only downside is, is if you mess up and you need to go restore or do anything, you gotta go into recovery manually and you know mess with it. I'll put a link in the description to a video that just shows you how to reboot into recovery. So I'll put a link to that as well. I'll also have a link in the description where you can uh, flash your phone completely stock to Android 4.1 Jellybean TouchWiz. 100% stock, you can take it back to Sprint. If there's something wrong with it, you can flash back to stock. And if it's something still wrong with it, then you know it wasn't the ROM and it's your phone and you need to get your phone replaced. So you can take it back to Sprint and get it repaired. So I'll have links to installing this manually if you don't want to use this automated set and forget, super easy method. And I'll also have a link to flashing stock in case you mess something up and you need to go back to 100% stock and take your phone to Sprint. Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and just let it fast forward and I'll try to include how long it took. The only real big downside to using this method for backing up your ROM is you can't choose whether you want to compress it and make it smaller. So like if you're limited on space, you can make the archive smaller and so it just saves space, but it does take longer to make that archive. And also you can't choose whether you back it up on your internal or external SD card. You can't manually fine tune any settings at all. So actually I, now I kind of wish I had backed it up manually and then rebooted the system and showed you how to do this part. Oh well. All of that is in the video I'm gonna link to in the description that I was just talking about a minute ago that shows you how to do it manually. Manually reboot into recovery, manually back up your ROM, manually wipe, manually install. Links to everything you're gonna need are gonna be in the description of this video. Oh, that's that's pretty cool. If you look up there, it actually says settings, backup options, system, data, boot. Those are the three most important things and those are the only three things I would choose myself. Compression is on and any five generation is off. 
Now, I would prefer to have MG5 generation on, and I would also back up to my external SD cards, so that way, like, if I wipe my internal, you know, storage or for any reason or anything like that, it was on my external SD card, I'm fine. And I can also take my external SD card, and I can drag my TORP folder and my Titanium backup folder onto my computer's hard drive and store it safely. So, besides those two options, I'm fine with what it's choosing right now. Awesome. So now it's actually doing the wipe. It's backed up everything. Uh, it's cleaning everything. It's going to be installing the ROM here very shortly. And oh, look, actually, there it is. CM 10.1. It's installing it. Oh, now it's installing the G apps. We are about done. So come on, come on. It's almost there. Do we, do we, do we? Come on. Come on, hurry up. Hurry up. Show me the good stuff. Show me the money. Show me. Show me. You can do it. Yes! Signed you by 10.1 Android 4.2.1 on the Samsung Galaxy S3. <laughs> You'll have to excuse my uh, nerdgasm there. <laughs> I now have CM 10.1 on my Evo 4 GLTE. I have a video and you can check it out on my channel. I have CM 10.1 on my Galaxy S3, which is this video. I've got CM 10.1 on my Transformer Prime, which I'll have a video of that um, probably next week and maybe tomorrow. I don't know. It depends on what what, um, what I'm up to. But uh, I'm hoping, oh, I have CM 10.1 on my Galaxy Nexus as well. So I'll probably do a video of that um, here shortly as well. So. I've got CM 10.1 on like four different devices. Now I just need CM 10.1 nightlies on my Note 2. All right, so we've got the ROM all set up and we're just going to press next. And, well not the ROM, but we are signed into her Google account. So yeah, now we'll be able to download apps and you know, I don't know. First thing I'm gonna download is Titania Backup and restore some of her most important things like the games that she's gotten real far on and stuff like that. Awesome, there you go. To get rid of this annoying nagging thing up here, just press on it, uncheck that, check it again, press okay, and then it won't bug you anymore and it'll go away. Oh, that's pretty neat. I didn't change that. That was like that, you know, from the first install. So we're gonna go here and Something I want to show you real quick is if you go to um, down here, you don't see developer options. So to send you backup, it's going to go, oh, you need to enable USB debugging. How you do that is you go here, you type build or tap on build number. It says three more taps, two more taps, one more tap. Bam. You are now a developer and you have developer options and you can go in here. You can check this, press OK, and then you can back out. And then now you have developer options and you can also go to security and you can... Um, check unknown sources, okay, and uncheck this. So, bam, now Titanium Backup will have no issues at all. Um, if we go to About Phone and we double tap on or tap on this, you'll see the little Android Jelly Bean guy, and then you can hold on him and do this whole thing and flip these out of the way. Or you can go down here to your um, CyanogenMod version, and bam, you get that little guy right there, and you can do the same thing. You just hold on him, and it has the little things that you can toss around. So you get this little pull down thing where you can clear your notifications, you can um, have your quick settings like brightness and you can toggle it and then uh, yeah, I mean you can just go to your settings and then for system, first things I like to do is status bar. I like to do the AM PM and put that up there, uh, normal or small and then I like to do a circle with percentage which is freaking sexy, it's awesome. Notification count, so if you have more than one notification, it'll let you know. Uh, <laughs> my SD card's getting full on my camera, and my battery's about to die, so I need to hurry this up. Um, hardware keys, um, yeah, you can just play with all this. The quick pan uh, panning, panel settings, I uh, can't even say that. Notification drawer, uh, power widgets, the clock widget, um, notification light. Um, you can set all the different values and etc. For battery light, you can change that. Oh, you can change the color when it's full and stuff. That's pretty cool. Uh, hardware keys, enable custom actions. So like pressing the menu key does something else, holding it does something else. Um, 
the three dot overflows like the before GLTE where it doesn't have the on-screen keyboard and Facebook and other apps have that annoying stupid thing in there. And that's about it. If you want to follow me on Twitter, please do so. You'll learn about upcoming videos and devices I'm getting like the Nexus 7, Nexus 10, Note 3, S4, etc. Um, also, um, Links to everything will be in the description of the video you're currently watching. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you get signed Gemini 10.1, Android 4.2.1 on your Samsung Galaxy S3, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it when you do that and it lets me know you enjoyed the video and encourages me to keep doing what I'm doing. If you're new to my channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button below. I'll also have a link in the description and you can click it and subscribe and it'll notify you of all my new videos on the Galaxy S3, Galaxy Nexus, Galaxy S4 when I get it, Note 3 when I get it, Transform Prime, HD Touchpad. <laughs> Galaxy Nexus, everything. So please subscribe. Please give this video a thumbs up. This is what would Josh do, and I'm out. Oh, real quick before my SD card gets full and battery dies. Um, something that's really cool about Sign Juan Tan is if you hold this down for a second, uh, normally you swipe stuff out of the way to kill it. Oh, uh, there's a little button up here now, and it kills all your tasks for you. So it's pretty freaking sweet. Deuces.